Hey there everyone, Hitesh here. Welcome to another video of the Golang series. And this is probably the last data type that we're going to discuss and we're going to move forward into the arena of loops and functions and amazing stuff. Now this is one of the most powerful data type in the Golang because it allows us to create our own data type using the existing data type. Now structures in the Go is pretty powerful because of the fact that we don't have the concept of inheritance in the Go. That's why the structs are like the best deal you have got. But don't underestimate that. It is pretty powerful. It has got a lot of features, a lot of syntax. We are not going to be discussing all of them, but I'll show you what we are not discussing. So let's go ahead and work on with that. So I'm going to go ahead first and foremost. I'm going to simply say this is my Go main. The package syntax is pretty okay. And let's just do these declaration a bit later. First and foremost, let's declare a simple structure. So the syntax of declaring the structure is pretty simple. You simply write the keyword type. And yes, this is how we define a structure. Not with the keyword struct, but actually the type is important. Then you simply define and give it a name. I'm going to give it a name user. Now here comes an argument that a lot of people say is that it should all be lowercase, it should be all uppercase. But let me tell you what the guidance of the Golang documentation says. Uh, first, let me write that. So we're going to have a struct and inside that I'm going to have a name which is going to be of type string. So according to the official guidelines and people who are in the community, they always say that the structure, the first letter should be always in the uppercase and all the properties that you're defining are going to be with the uppercase as well. Now surely it doesn't throw up any error or anything, but this is how you should be doing this stuff if you're defining a structure. Now two things that we are not discussing yet in this uh, video are how to set up the default value in the structure as well as how to write functions uh, that deal up with the things. For example, if somebody just puts up an empty space inside this name, how you can put up a default name in there. I don't know why would you like to do that, but let's just say you want to do it. So we'll be discussing that later on when we understand that how functions are defined in the Golang and stuff like that. But right now, let's just go for the default ones. So I'm going to have a couple of properties here. So our user is going to have a name, is going to have an email, and probably for some reason, it's going to have an uh, age as well. So this is our structure all ready to be just used. Now I'm going to define or use this structure for three different users that will give you idea that how the syntax actually works. First and foremost, I'm going to use a simple Rob as a simple user. And I'm going to infer the value of the Rob as simply like this. And then you can use curly braces. Yes, curly braces. This is how we use that. Then we simply go ahead and say this is going to be a Rob as name. And uh, the email is going to be rob at the rate lco.dev. There we go. And age is going to be 34. Now we simply can go ahead and print it out. And for printing, I would like to use a printf statement instead of that. And let me show you one interesting thing here that so far we have learned that we can use person v and I'm going to put a slash n as well. And I can define that, hey, this is going to be a rob and this is how you print out the stuff. Let's go ahead and see what's the output result. Uh, without a doubt, it gives me an struct in the curly braces separated by spaces. That's great. But you can also use this percent plus V, which is going to give you more information about what Rob is, what properties it has got and what you have set those properties for. So when I run this one this time, it gives me the argument that name is Rob, email is Rob at lco.dev and age. So this plus V is going to be super helpful in case of these structs. And again, without any doubt, we can use and go ahead and do specification as well. For example, I want to go ahead and just print out probably email uh, of that. So I can just go ahead and run that again. Uh, pretty simple stuff, nothing groundbreaking in this case. So there we go. Now another syntax that you're going to see is with the new keywords. So let's go ahead and declare a user Sam, which we're going to design with the keyword new and we're going to have this user. And now we need to set up all the properties. So we're going to say Sam dot email. I'm going to start with name. I'm going to go with the order. So name is going to be Sam and Sam dot email. Sam dot email is going to be something like this, sam at the rate lco.dev. And of course, the last one, sam.age, which is going to be 22, let's just say. 
And of course, we can use the same stuff to print out these values as well. It's not going to be any difference, much of the difference, uh, just a, some syntactic sugar that we are adding up here. And we can go ahead and say, hey, this is going to be sam.email. It prints out the sam email. So no big deal. Okay, we got all the stuff. And again, one more thing I would like to get you notice here. Oh, we accidentally actually got this, but I wanted to mention this stuff that when we print out this one here, Sam with a plus V again, it gives us almost exactly the same thing here. Uh, but notice here this ampersand sign, which is pretty cru crucial and you should worry about this one. So when you're using the new, remember in the last video, we talked about how we are using the new keyword and the make keyword. So this is the impact of new keyword. And make sure you, you always worry about that if you're declaring with use of new keyword, and when you print out this, this is actually a reference that you're getting back. So remember the pointers and all these classes that we have got. And uh, the final third way, which is again, a little bit similar, but still a bit different. We're gonna define a user, which is gonna be top, Toby. And this time we're gonna using, we will be using the third syntax. In the last one, we saw that we can use this new keyword, which gives us back a reference using the ampersand, this means I can use this ampersand also to set my values. Remember, pointer works in the both way. So I can simply refer to this user and then I can just go ahead and use this one. In this case, I have to mention all the properties just right here. So I have to say Toby and then we are gonna have Toby at the rate lco.dev and for some reason he's 22, <laughs> there we go. And we can simply go ahead, copy this and paste it up here. And this time I want to print out Toby. Again, this needs to be clear in your mind that how things are going on. So let me clean up the screen, run this again. So we got our name just like that. This is the first syntax that we have used just like this. You'll see most of the time this one, but some people like to use this new keyword. They are playing around with the pointers and reference. So make sure you are aware about this one, the second syntax. And in the third syntax, we have used the Toby. Again, we are directly using the person. This is actually a rare one, but just wanted to mention, yes, this is possible in the Golang. If you find it somewhere, don't get scared, this is there. Okay, now again, there are of course drawbacks and advantages of using the each syntax. I would usually recommend to go for this syntax or either this syntax here. Again, a quick reminder that right now we haven't talked yet about that how we can set up the default values in our struct, which is a pretty easy process, but we haven't talked on to that. Also, we haven't talked about how I can define a specific method uh, which can uh, deal up with this and if anything goes wrong that can talk to that and bunch of other stuff because we haven't talked about these functions yet. So as soon as we come up with the functions and all those requirements, we're gonna revisit the structure because there's a little bit more to the structure in this. So that's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.